it might seem this thing is never going to end. But that's the test. When is it going to end? Even the prophets, in times of trial, that thought came to their hearts. When is the victory of Allah going to come? So it's natural. But we know it is coming and that's what keeps us firm and on the path. And the third major way to develop patience in times of adversity is to count the blessings that Allah has given us. Count it in such a way that when we consider the trial, it's insignificant. When we consider all the good that has come to us, and we put that on one scale, and we put on the other scale the trial that we're facing. So because what is the problem in being patient? Usually because we forget all the good. The gratitude element goes, and all we can focus on is the problem. And that's where, where the problem now becomes bigger in our eyes and shaitan will work on it. Because we forget the blessing. So one of the ways to develop patience in this context is to reflect on the many blessings that we have in our lives. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us patience in abstaining from doing what is displeasing to him to give us that sense of shyness from doing things which we know he hates and to give us also the strength to abstain from what is displeasing to him by reflecting on the good that he has put in our lives and keeping us focused on the goal of this life what is it that we're headed for? Isn't it paradise? Then it's not going to be cheap. Help us to realize the price and the value of paradise so that we would abstain from what is displeasing to him. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. When we consider patience, we have in our lives, as we said, a time of ease, yusr, and a time of difficulty, usr. And patience is required in both times. Though we tend to think of patience in times of difficulty, that theme seems to be the focus, everybody is conscious and aware of that one. Patience in times of ease, this is not only as important, it is in fact more important. Because patience in times of difficulty that is something which believers and disbelievers share. Even the disbelievers can be patient in times of difficulty. Why? When they're faced with a difficulty which is beyond their control, they can say to themselves, well, no point getting upset. I can't do anything about it. I just have to bear it. Or they may stop themselves by saying, you know, I'm a man. I should show my manliness. I should be able to bite the bullet, take it like a man. So they can be patient in those times of trial. And the believer, though his motivation for being patient should be beyond those points, but in the end, he is faced with something similar to what the disbeliever is. So disbelievers can be patient in times of difficulty. But in times of ease, this is when 
patience is rare among the disbelievers and this is when the trial is the greatest patience in times of ease and that's why we find some verses in the Quran which sound a bit shocking if one doesn't understand what is Allah talking about here and non-Muslims reading it question what does this mean for example in Surah Al-Munafiqoon verse 9 where Allah says there Ya ladina amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah wa man yaf'al dhalika fa ulaika humul khasirun oh you believe do not let your riches or your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah if any acts in this way it is to their own loss and we also find in Surah Taghabun verse 14 Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu inna min azwajikum wa auladikum aduwan lakum fahdharuhum O you who believe truly among your wives and your children are enemies to yourselves so beware of them you know what is Allah speaking about here our children our wealth our wives for women husbands what makes them our enemy is it because they get into arguments with us they may do things which are displeasing to us etc is it about that no what it's speaking about is our love for them that our love for them would cause us to do what is displeasing to Allah our children want certain things whether they're toys whether they're videos whether they're clothing whatever they want certain things and though we know that these things are not good for them these things are not pleasing to Allah but the child keeps crying oh father dad why not I'm a good boy I did this you promised me that you all the stories come out until you feel you have to buy it for him so you buy it or your wife the wives they ask for certain things we know it's not really appropriate it's not good we really shouldn't have it in our homes it's not good for them it's not good for the home but because of our love for them desire to want to please them that they will be happy and husband should try and make his wife happy wives should make her their husbands happy but there are limits there are limits if we make them happy and make Allah unhappy then we have failed so this is where they become an enemy and actually in one of the companions uh, Ibn Abbas was asked about this verse he said actually the verse was revealed concerning an individual who had accepted Islam and brought his family into Islam with him in Mecca then when the Hijra came it was time for Hijra it was almost at that time so he decided to make the Hijra but his wife and his children stopped him from making the hijra they didn't want to leave Mecca because this was their place they grew up this is their families everybody to go and leave that and set off so when he went to uh, Medina later and he saw how all of those who had made the hijra ahead of him how they had grown spiritually how their knowledge had reach certain levels etc he felt this big sense of loss and he wanted to punish his wives and his children for what they caused him to lose out on and then Allah reveals the world reveal this verse telling him that indeed in your wives and your children are enemies so beware of them this was your test you failed it but beware in the future don't punish them it was your decision so why 
Patience in times of ease is considered far greater than in times of difficulty as I said before was on one hand because of the fact that anybody can do it even disbelievers also it is the fact that in times of ease you have a choice in times of difficulty well you have no other choice you're forced it's either be patient and get through it or tear your hair jump up and down scream and it doesn't do anything anyway so you have no choice whereas in ease the time of ease you can easily avoid patience then because it's a choice so this is the test that we're faced and we said that patience is something which is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it is something which we can learn patience takes many different names depending on the circumstances in times of battle patience could be called courage to stand before the enemy in the times of anger patience would be called self-control so patience has many different names we call it a variety of different things under different circumstances but it all has to do in the end with controlling ourselves abstaining from saying or doing or acting upon things which are in fact displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta and the Prophet sallallahu had said وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ whoever pretends to be patient Allah will eventually give them patience so it is about externally if we don't feel patience within ourselves externally show patience and if we continue to do it eventually it will be internalized this is the way this is the route which Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu gave us and he was the prime example which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had instructed us to pray for peace and blessings on him saying Ya Ayyuladheena Amanu no, sorry uh, Ya Ayyuladheena Amanu hmm? eh, Shukran Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya Ayyuladheena Amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima This instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was for us to recognize that example which he was to follow his way to learn from his example to live a life of patience in the way that he did I ask Allah to give us that patience to give us that fear to give us that awareness of himself to give us the love of his prophet may God's peace and blessings be upon him and to give us a commitment to Islam to stay patiently on the course, on the path to paradise. Aqimus Salah.